Hello everyone, my name is Bill. Welcome to our video. Hope to do a simple review today of the Redtail RT470. That radio was just released uh, late 2022. The slide you see up there to my left, but just kind of an overview. Let's just kind of walk through it. Uh, this is a six band radio, VHF 144 and two meter. That's 136 to 180. Uh, VHF 223 and 125 meter. It's uh, 200 to 260 megahertz. VHF fixed mobile, that's the 330 to 400 megahertz, UHF 442 to 448, that's 70 millimeter, centimeter, uh, airband receive only, uh, and then broadcast FM radio. Uh, I've had the radio now for a few weeks. It's a 10 watt radio that's tested the frequencies that uh, in the VHF uh, bands, yeah, it goes as high as 11, 11 uh, watts, 6.8 for medium, 3.4 for low, uh, not really 10 watt there. In the 70 centimeter, they're more like 8 watt, which is very respectable. It's a nice, strong radio. Uh, the battery, rather, it's a 3,800 milliamp battery. That uh, that's a long. That battery lasted me two or three days before having to charge. So 3,800 was a surprise. And then you see the little logo up there for NOAA. I think I have a radio that I can't tune in to the weather channels. What made uh, this one nice? They have a button. You press a button, and you get immediately get go right into the weather for your area. On this one, it's not it's not pre-programmed. Three custom buttons. So it's the uh, well. Here, let me just show you. Okay, three buttons here. A little small round button here. A uh, program button number two. So we have these two buttons. Each of them can be programmed. So basically, short press, long press. Same thing here. And they share uh, some of the same options. In the programming software, there's a little drop down. So you can set it for PTTB, you can set it for NOAA, you can set it for radio, which is the broadcast FM. You can set it for transmit power, scan, search, or a good old uh, LED flashlight right here at the top. Uh, it'll come on right there. I guess that's about it for this slide. Um, I hope you'll stick around. We're going to talk uh, in specific on all the bands and the testing on the software. There's a slide later on I'll join with you. And then uh, there's a couple of slides showing the screens that are in the, uh, the, the programming software. It's called All Band. And I'll talk a little bit about those and, and that should be do it. And anyway, that's it for now. taking this part of the video to talk a little bit of how we test the power levels of the RT-470. What you can see is I used the Radtel connected to a Surecom SW33 with a dummy load at the end. And what I did was I entered in each of the frequencies that I wanted to test, and it was a mix in all the bands. When the testing was done, I looked through the results and tried to pick one or two examples that were pretty much similar to all the frequencies in that particular band. So you can see in the chart to my left, I tested in the AMSAT band, the amateur satellite, 
two meters, marine, 1.25 meters, fixed mobile, 70 centimeters, GRMS, which includes the FRS, and then uh, there are many of them that were public safety. I started filming while I was testing all of the 65 with a close-up of the radio in here. So I thought, well, gee, what you're really interested in is the results. And that's the chart you see on my left. So as an example, let's go to the middle of the chart and look at 70 centimeter UHF. Tested on frequency 442.12500. One of the nice things about the RT470 is it has three programmable buttons. Right here on the radio, uh, there's the push to talk. Then there's PF2, and then there's this button that's called PF3. Now, this, these three optional programming buttons, the lower PTT, or I'm sorry, this PT, and then the button, uh, have a series. You can set them for to, to activate search, scan, turn on the FM radio, uh, turn on the weather channel, um, or change the power. That's the one I wanted. So I set, I set this button for power right here. So what I did was, uh, for instance, like we talked about on the 70 centimeter, I go to I go to that channel that was programmed for 442125. Using the power change button, make sure it wasn't high, press push to talk. Guess what? That was 8.2. Change the power to medium, press put to talk, 3.5. You got it. Change to low, 1.2. That's came in. So those are the results across all the different bands. One last thing. You'll see uh, there's uh, on FRS channel eight, it's uh, purple and it has lines through all the frequencies. And that's because channels eight through 14 in FRS and GMRS oh, don't allow you to transmit more than a half watt. Since this radio, its lowest power setting only tra uh, transmits at 1.1 watt, it can't get down to a half watt. So when you would be setting up these channels, if you're setting them up for listening, what you need to do is we'll just zero that out. So one other one that, that you'll see in the chart, it's uh, uh, zeroed out or uh, lined out. That's channel three. GMRS channels one through seven are limited to five watts. Since high would go out at 8.3, if you're going to uh, leave your uh, channel, your GMS one through seven for transmit, then just use medium. Remember, though, you're, you're, not, allow you're not allowed to transmit GMRS in this radio even if you have a license. This is a part 15 radio and not a part 95. And that's what GMS radios are supposed to be manufactured and certified as part 95. So, uh, and why would I, why would I even program to transmit at all? Very simply, we travel in the woods. We do a lot of hiking and, and side by side riding up in the mountains of Colorado. And we like to scan and listen if there's others in our group that may be having a problem. If somebody is on a GMS radio and they're going, help, I need help, I had a flat, or fell off the cliff, whatever it might be, I might want to answer right back, I heard you, I'll come help. And uh, that's the case. That's why I might put it in as medium. Okay, that's it for the testing. Take a few seconds, look over the chart, and uh, I'll be back later uh, to talk about the programming software and how that works. to the uh, test of the uh, different frequencies. I've, I set up some test frequencies, went into an enclosed environment and tested. Yeah, I used two radios. I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Before we get to that, real quick, I want to show you uh, a good test for the audio quality, uh, the weather channel and uh, FM radio. I use talk radio music. Honestly, it's not that good. But the talk radio was, was fairly clear. So I'm going to show you those. And the other thing I, I think I demonstrated in this uh, video is I programmed one of the programmable buttons for to go to FM radio, and I programmed another button to go to weather. So you, either one of those were one button press away. So let's take a look at that, and then I'll be right back. Fan. Coming up next, I'm going to try it. It could fail spectacularly. Was it all Kyrie all weekend for you, or did the NHL All Star game, Pro Bowl games, or Joey's sit off? On. The current time is 11 16 a.m. Central Standard Time. You are losing. 
listening to NOAA. All hazards radio. The voice of the National Weather Service. Okay, let's uh, continue the review. I wanted to test the radio's ability to transmit and receive in each of the test bands that I use. Clearly, I don't want to interfere with any active. So I, first of all, checked on a receive all these channels and uh, there was an inactivity. Second of all, and I've included uh, a picture up there on the far left, I'm in a structure that when it was built was completely surrounded with a radiant barrier. And I'm in that top room that's basically, I get no RF interception. I get no cell signal, I get nothing. So I, I, what I did was I set up two radios. Um, the radio and the video that you're getting ready to see is the RT-470 receiving those. And I turned it on scan. And then I went uh, about 25 feet away with an RT-490 that I have. And uh, just cycled. Through. I loaded the same uh, frequency channels on each radio. I, I left the RT-470 scanning. And then on the RT-490, I'd key in, I'd see the scan had stopped, and I did a brief statement to test it and then stayed quiet. The scanning came back on, did the second channel, third channel. I did nine of them. So uh, that's it. I'm going to let you, this is the frequencies I use, and uh, I'm going to be quiet now and we'll run the video. I think it goes through all of them in about 15, 20 seconds, something like that. So uh, let's take a look. Testing the RT-470, amateur satellite band, frequency test complete. Testing the RT-470, marine band. Testing the RT-470, 1.25 meter band. Testing the RT-470, fixed mobile band. Testing the RT-470, 70 centimeter band. Frequency check. Testing the RT-470, GRMS channel 22. Frequency check complete. T-470, GMRS repeater 18. Frequency check complete. Scanning stop. Okay, in this section, I want to walk you through the computer programming software that Rattel provides. It's an application called All Band Walkie. You can see it up here. And when you first load it, it looks like this. It comes up blank. So what we want to do before we go further, is we want to make sure that our programming cable, which is now plugged into the radio and into the PC, is set for the right communications port. So that's under here under settings. Settings. I think you can. You can see that it came up default of COM1. I've already checked and I know my system is COM3, so I'm going to click OK on that. So the next step to do is let's read. You can see it reading, hopefully. All right, and what I've loaded are all the frequencies that I set up to do the uh, transmission testing. If you started and didn't have anything in there, it was blank like in the beginning, let me show you real quick how you would add a, a thing. For instance, uh, let's just do the uh, GRMS channel 15. That is 462.550. As soon as I hit enter, it populated the transmit frequency. And I'll take a second to tell you that for repeaters, if you were doing a repeater, you could very likely have a different frequency for receive and for transmit. So that's a little bit beyond the, this demonstration, but just know that it does support repeaters. Here's where you would choose your uh, power. And you go back and look at the uh, power test. You can see there that at different frequencies, there's different powers. So I can choose high, low, or medium. In this case, I'll choose high. Then there's, do we want wide or narrow? PTTID, just leave that off. BCL, that's 
busy channel lockout scan ad when I, I wanted to have the channel A showing 470 tests so that you wouldn't get confused about seeing multiple frequencies. So I just created a dummy channel there and I turned it off on the scan. That's why it stayed the same. And I had nothing for transmission and that's why uh, it didn't uh, transmit. We're going to call this GMRS15. Uh, and that would be the name that shows up. Okay. So that's that. Now what if you have a, a, a channel in there and you want to get rid of it? Very simply, when they delete the receive, they all go away. So that's how you do it. Just delete, delete the receive. Unlike um, this one, let's say, uh, let me go ahead and put that back, 467.5562. This is what would have been by default when I entered it. If I didn't want that to be a transmit channel, just delete it. It leaves the rest of the stuff alone. So that's how you do that. Other than the specifics for each channel, we want to edit the, the global parameters, and that's called optional features. Now, if you, if you are not in full screen mode, you won't see all of this. It kind of cuts off, but you can grab it and move it over, and now you can see everything. So what's over here? Well, if you want to listen to the FM radio, it's right here. You want to turn that on or off. Or, and let's, uh, we've made changes. We've done everything we want. Now we go up to where it says right. And don't worry about this one. There's a bunch of them. I honestly haven't figured out what those are for. But I just ignore them and it works just fine. Just hit OK. Now if you look at the screen on your radio, it would say program. And it's writing out the program. So when it's done, success doesn't close itself. You need to just... Get it out of the way. Same thing on read. It'll still be there. Just exit and it'll get out of the way. And there you have it. That's uh, it for a small demo of all band. And uh, it really makes it easy to add frequencies. Hey, that's it. Uh, I hope you found this review of the Rattail RT470 to be helpful. Um,